Turn with me to Luke 19. And I'm going to attempt to land today the kingdom, the clash of the kingdoms today, okay? I want to land that, in, in, in that even in itself is challenging because I have more word in me than I have time today. But I want to get it to a point to where we can land it and shift to something else. Not that we escape the kingdom, not that we transition to something else per se, but I can preach this for the rest of the year. There's enough content in the Bible because that's the purpose of what God was talking about for us to stay on that. But I want to illuminate a few things today in, in, in line with what we've already discussed. So don't take this message as itself in, in and of itself. Make sure you add into that the other things that we've already discussed in the other teachings. Amen? Luke 19, you there? We're going to read 19 through 1 through 27. Is that okay? All right, let's do it anyway, all right? So it says here, and Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. It says, and behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among the publicans, and he was rich. And he sought to see Jesus, who he was, and could not for the press because he was, a little, he was little of stature. And he ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said unto, unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must abide at thy house. And he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all murmured, saying that he was going to be the guest with a man that is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. Hmm. And Jesus said unto him, this day is salvation come to this house for as much as he is also a son of Abraham. Hallelujah. He says, for the son of man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. Don't miss that. For the son of man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Very important. Verse 11, and as they heard these things, he added and spake in parable. Because he was nigh into Jerusalem and because they thought that the kingdom of God should, should immediately appear. He said, therefore, a certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and returned. And he called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds and said unto them, Occupy till I come. But his citizens hated him and sent a message after him saying, We will not have this man to reign over us. And it came to pass that when he was returned, having received the kingdom, he commanded these servants to be called unto him to whom he had given the money, that he might know how much every man had gained by trading. Then came the first saying, Lord, thy pound hath gained ten pounds. And he said unto him, Well, thou good servant, because thou hast been faithful in a very little, have thou authority over ten cities." And the second came, saying, Lord, thy pound hath gained five pounds. And he said, Likewise unto him, Behold, or be thou over five cities. And another came, saying, Lord, behold, here is thy pound, which I have kept laid up in a napkin. For I feared thee, because thou art an astute man. Thou takest up that thou layest, down, layest not down, and reapest that thou did not sow. And he said unto him, Out of thine own mouth will I judge thee, thou wicked servant. Thou knewest that I was an austere man, taking up that I laid not down, and reaping which I did not sow. Wherefore then gavest not thou my money into the bank, that at my coming I might have required my own with usury or interest. And he said unto him, or he said unto them that stood by, Take from him thy pound, and give it to him that has ten pounds. And they said unto him, Lord, he has ten pounds. For I say unto you that unto every one which hath shall be given. And from him that has not, even that he hath shall be taken away from him. But those mine enemies which would not that I should reign over them, bring hither and slay them before me. Thank God for the reading of his word. Again, we've been talking about the kingdoms clashing, okay? There's the kingdom of God. We talked last service about what? The kingdom of God. The kingdom of Satan, 
kingdom of men, kingdom of this world, and kingdom of religion. Do you see the concepts there and how they function? Now, now, now I, I, I went to this chapter here. Um, let's walk through it. Let's walk through it. Y'all pray for me because I got more word than I have time, okay? Um, here it starts off with Zacchaeus. And the Bible says that Zacchaeus was a publican. He was a tax collector. And tax collectors were grouped with the sinners. They, were, they did evil. They were, they were known to uh, violate the people and ta- overtax them because they, had, uh, they would overtax them and take more money than it was due. So when Jesus came and met with Zacchaeus, they say he's going to the house of a sinner. What does that mean? They say he's going to the house of somebody. They disqualify Zacchaeus from being able to be redeemed. Isn't that how people do? They, they hold your past against you and you can never be more than what you were, right? So, so let's look at that. Let's look here in, in, Zac, in um, 19 here. He says in verse 5, he says, and when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said unto Zacchaeus, make haste, come down, for today I must abide at thy house. So Jesus made the decision to go see Zacchaeus. Notice now, he made the decision. Jesus was about relationship. When you look at the scriptures and you see how Jesus would make uh, what would call, would look like out-of-the-way trips, he would make specific trips to specific people to minister to them. He would go to the well. He would go to a woman's house. He would go to Mary and Martha to see Lazarus. They considered him friendship. He would do certain things to get to certain people so nobody is out of reach of Jesus. He says, Zacchaeus, today I'm coming to your house. Watch verse 6. He says that he made haste and came down, and he received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they murmured, saying, he's gone to be the guest with a man that is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And I, watch this. And if I've taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him for. So he identified who he was. Watch. Jesus said, if you deny me before men, I will deny you before my father. But if you confess me before men, I will then confess, I will witness to the father in heaven on your behalf. But you got to be able to stand. Don't miss that. It says Zacchaeus stood. People were around who knew who he was. Watch this. He got it off of him. Many of us don't get it off of us because we don't confess who we are. We like, oh, that wasn't me. That was, no, that was you. He says, if I took anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him. I, I've been stealing from so many people, I don't even know who I stole from. But if they come forward, I will restore them. Come on, I got enough. I will, the Bible says he was rich, right? Now watch here. I want, this, is, this is one of my focal points. It says Zacchaeus stood and said that. Watch what Jesus said in verse 9. He says, and Jesus said unto him, this day is salvation come to what? This house. So he's at Zacchaeus' house. He's saying salvation has come because he's also a son of Abraham. So he brought him into the fold. Abraham is the father of our faith. So when Jesus references Abraham, he's dealing with the religious people. Because Abraham had two sons, Isaac and Ishmael. So he's bringing now, watch this, Zacchaeus into the sheepfold, into the fold of faith now. He's bringing him in and referencing Abraham. Don't miss that. Verse 10 is a focus. He says, for the son of man is come to seek And to save that which was lost. The Son of Man has come. Jesus has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Now, in your own time, I want you to look at whatever Bible translation you like to go into because different translations quote verse 10 differently. There are some translations that say Jesus came or the Son of Man came to save the lost. Some translations say, well, he came to save those that were lost. And they miss the that. Now, I love the King James here because it's specific. That's why you got to be mindful now because you get a copy of a copy of a copy of a translation of a translation. Some things get lost in translation, right? All right? Some things get lost in translation. So that's, that's why I'm here. He says, for the Son of Man came to seek and to save that which was lost. So I need the saints now to know. I need the Christians to know. I need the believers to know that we did not only lose salvation or eternal life. The kingdom was lost. So if Jesus came to restore that which was lost, not just those that were lost, but that includes the those. We were those that were lost, but we were not the only thing. That's why so many believers just stop at being saved. And we get saved and we get settled. We get saved and we get safe. We get saved and we get on the fence. We get, no, we have to now take salvation and now enter into the kingdom of God. 
And if we don't, we're going to keep our ways that we had from the world before we got saved. So we try to get sanctified instead of understanding, wait, Zacchaeus in this very moment became an ambassador for Jesus. In this very moment. Now, I can tell you here that the scripture's talking about the kingdom because the very next verse, verse 11, watch, don't miss this, and they heard. He has Zacchaeus' house. Who is they? <laughs> the religious people will follow you home. He's at Zacchaeus' house, and they heard these things. He added, wait, hold on. He established something with Zacchaeus. Now he's going into a deeper realm. He's going into another level of this now. It says, and he added unto them. He know he was by Jerusalem, though the religious people are all around, because they thought, say they. They thought the kingdom of God would come immediately. Notice, if you, you got to pay attention in Scripture to what the demons said and what the religious people said when they encountered Jesus. Here's why. Because it reveals his identity and who he was. The demons would always say, oh, the son of man, are you come to what? Punish us. Are you coming to torture us? That's what he would tell the demons to shut up. And then the religious people would pressure him and say, when is this kingdom coming? This kingdom you keep talking about. So it's revealing what Jesus did. Jesus preached the kingdom of God. Jesus preached the kingdom of God. If Jesus held the meeting and said, come unto me, he would start off with saying, the kingdom is like. How can I explain it? Why is that so important? Because oftentimes as believers, we look in the scripture and miss the context of when somebody's asking Jesus a question and when he's answering them and we take the answers of Jesus and make it our syllabus. We take the responses of Jesus and make it our teaching. That's not where Jesus started from. So if somebody were to come in here right now on left, and y'all know I'll get them on right, that doesn't mean you take what I answered them with and make it my preaching. Do you understand? It's the same concept. So they were coming to Jesus to snare him in his words. They were coming to Jesus to trip him up. The religious people would follow him through the cornfields and watch the disciples not wash their hands. They sent in spies in a lot of cases. They say, oh, I know you're from God, and I know all these miracles you do are from God, but let me ask you something. You got to be mindful. Everybody who asks you a question don't want it answered. But if we're not discerning, that's why I don't believe in all this debate. I see a lot of Christians online debate. Stop debating people who don't want Jesus. They're going to have to have an encounter with the Lord. And you feeding their cerebral, you feeding their intellect is not going to deal with their heart. See, it's set up in a way that you're not going to know everything about the Bible. That's why it's by faith. So we spend a lot of time trying to out trick somebody or give them this scripture to answer this scripture. I don't have to know everything about the Bible. Hey, I once was blind, but now I see. I know the me I was. If you know the you you were, you already got the proof that Jesus is real. See, we miss it. Looking through the epistles, we miss the epistle. You're the living epistle to tell them Old me would have swung on you already. Old me would have been looking, robbing yo. You left your car open like that, man. Please, I'm going in public. People got them jeeps. I'm like, oh, that old me would have been all over that. Old me would have had that car. I'd have had your system already out of there. Can't nobody no alarm. I'd have been gone before the police showed up. The old me. Up oh, saw that lady. Old me would have been the block. Old me would have said, hey, 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 player, hey, look, hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. Old me. See, you're the proof that Jesus is real. See, it's an inside job that, walk, that gets walked outside. We try to go get an outside thing to walk. No, you cannot speak. You're not going to make Scripture speak to intellect. They're going to have to have an encounter with God. No man can come to the Father except they be drawn. All right? So, so watch now. He's entering them into the kingdom. Say kingdom. He's giving them a parable in verse 11. This is so important. He's giving them a parable to watch this, to reach some and miss some. Jesus doesn't break everything down for those who don't belong to him. 
He gives them enough. And for those who get pricked in their heart, who choose to now follow him, who choose to now come like Zacchaeus did, those who now choose to get up in the tree like Zacchaeus did, right? You with, you with me? Those are the people who he now reveals himself to. So watch in verse 11. He says here, he says he spake this parable to them because they thought the kingdom would come. So you look in Luke 17, 20, 21, it says the Pharisees were demanding of him when the kingdom will come. If you look on the thief of the cross, the thief said, remember me when you get into your kingdom. That's all Jesus talked about was kingdom because that's all they're asking him about is what he's been talking about. Verse 12, and he said, therefore, a certain nobleman went into a far country to receive himself a kingdom and to return. This is a parable now. He says, and he called unto him his ten servants and delivered unto them ten pounds and said unto them, occupy till I come. Now, now, if it was just about salvation, why would we need to occupy? That term occupy means to do business with what God gave you until he returns. So whatever he gave you, you're supposed to be doing business in the earth with that thing until he comes. Whatever gifts and talents he gave you, he didn't give us all the same gifts and talents so we all wouldn't have to be doing the same business. You all don't have the same understanding, the same level, the same anointing, the same gift. I can't paint like Rosie. I love the painting color. I can't do it. You will not buy one of my paintings. You would not. I promise you, you will not. As much as I'm passionate about it. Watch. I love music. You will not buy my album. I, I'm, I'm going somewhere with this. Why? I'm not anointed to do that. They say, well, I say follow your passion. Follow. No, no, that's some things you don't need to follow. Just because you're passionate about it don't mean you've been called to do it. Are you with me? So watch, in that, in that vein, watch, he called it, verse 13, and he called his servants and delivered unto them 10 pounds. And he said, occupy till I come. But his citizens hated him. His citizens hate, we are kingdom citizens. The question is, do you love God or do you hate God? Now, many of us wouldn't dare say we hate God, but I'm going to show you in some cases we do. Do you love him or do you hate him? He said, because we will not have this man to reign over us. Can I help you? Can I help you? Can I help you? Somebody's going to rule over you. You're going to be under the kingdom of God or the kingdom of Satan or you'll be deceived to think you're under the kingdom of men or under the kingdom of religion, which Satan still rules all those other kingdoms. Through deception, he still rules and reigns over them. Somebody's going to reign over you. Somebody's going to be your Lord. Don't nobody tell me what to do. Somebody does. They do. Watch. He says here, verse 15, and it came to pass when he was returned, having received his kingdom, he commanded that these servants be called unto him whom he had given the money that he might, watch this, know how much every man had gained. Now, don't get deceived to this by money. Remember, this is a parable. The word parable means to cast or to catch. It's an example of, because if you look at he went into Mark chapter 4, he talked about the seed. In Matthew 25, he talked about the oil for the lamps, and he talked about the talents. Uh, Matthew chapter 20, he he talked about uh, the pennies that he gave to the Lord's servants that he had. So don't get deceived by the measure that he uses. This is not about money. I said this is not about money. Although God is not anti-money. Okay, not going there. Watch verse 16. He says, and then came the first and said, Lord, I gained, I gained 10 pounds with the pound you gave me. He says, enter thou into the authority in verse 17. Then the second came, watch, in 18. He says, I gained five pounds. He said, I enter over five cities. Notice now, he only increased them to the level that they had already did the work and increased. So God, God, watch this. God is watching how you use what he gave you. He's watching how you got the wisdom. The wisdom he gave you, the answers he gave you, what are you doing with it? He's watching you. And many of us have not gained with what he gave us. He says trading. He uses the word what's occupy. It means exchange. It's not all necessarily doing business. It's identifying what God gave you. Watch this and understanding that he had a kingdom purpose for giving it to you. And if he gave it to you, if he gave you some of your looks God wants to use. Some of you. You bad. No, you bad. I'm just saying God's not you. No, God has anointed some people with beauty in a certain way. To be used to draw certain people. 
Y'all late, amen, it's okay. I know what I said. Watch this, verse 20. And then came another saying, Lord, here's thy pound. Here's thy gift. Here's thy talent. Here is thy call. Here is thy assignment. Here's what you gave me. I kept it laid up in a napkin, for I feared you because you are an austere man. Now, that word means, watch this, uncompromising on principles. That's a person who's stern or strict who doesn't compromise. Watch this. We try to use who God is against God. Isn't that what Adam did? He said, you gave me this woman. We begin to cast back into God's face who he is because we didn't get results for what doing what we were supposed to do with what he gave us. You know you're this. That's what he did. He accused him. You understand, man? Jesus said, yep, that's who I am. But, but, but watch this, verse 22. He says, out of your own mouth, I'm going to judge you. You are a wicked servant. He called it wicked. When we don't do what God wants with what God gave us, God calls it wicked. See, we think it's stuff. Watch this. When you abuse the relationship that God puts in your life, it's wicked. Because we think it's just about anointings. No, when you don't go apologize to the people you violate that you know God put in your life, it's wickedness. When you don't forgive, bring it on down because y'all all in the callings and prophecies. No, come out, of the, come out of the heavens. Come out of the heavens. Bring it on down real simple right now. When you don't work with the right heart, the people that God put in your life to steward, it's wickedness. Because it's abuse. Because he's not getting the return from what he gave you. He put somebody in your life, and there should be some fruit blossoming from that thing. But we, we take it for, we think we're entitled to certain people, so we don't work it. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going somewhere. What verse am I at? I ain't got no help. What verse? Stay with me. <laughs> no, don't worry about it now, don't worry about it. Say, out of your mouth, I'm going to judge you. He said, you knew that I was an austere man, taking up what I laid not down. Verse 23, he says, when I gave you, watch, wherefore, then I gave you my money, why didn't you take it to the bank? That at my coming, I could have interest. And he stood, verse 24, and said unto them by him, take from him that has the pound and give it to the ten. This is where I want to go right here. Take from him who has what I gave him, who didn't use it, and give it to the person who used what I gave them. This is fighting your Democrat mind right now. Because we love everybody to have the same. Did you get it? Did you treat everybody different? You no, know, you're supposed to treat. I love everybody the same, and I treat everybody the same. Not when they don't respond the same. I love everybody. My expression of love for everybody is different. Let me say that again. I love everybody. How I express my love to everybody is based on how they respond to what God gave me to give them. I'm giving you Bible right now. Jesus had the 12 and then he had the three. Because the nine didn't know how to act when they got in the room with certain stuff. They start talking about burning people up and, you know, move out of the room. See, when you respond a certain way, God says, I will give you more when you handle what I gave you the right way. So don't get mad because some people have. I said, don't get mad because some people have. Some people don't have because they have not stewarded what God gave them. And they still have a worldly mindset that they're entitled to it because everybody got a pound or everybody got a talent or everybody got a call or everybody got a boo or everybody got a relationship. No, you have to now steward what God gave you for him to give you more. And he goes on to say, let's look at it. I don't want you to miss this. Watch, watch the people, verse 25. I love this. And they said, look, look, look what they said. Look, they like y'all. Uh-uh. Uh-uh, Lord, don't get. Why are you giving them more? They already, they already got more. What about everybody else? Dealing with your kingdom mindset now. See, you gotta get you gotta abandon the world's mindset because the world gets you to compare, but God looks at the heart. God looks at what, how you handle what he gave you. God looks at how you respond when he gave you an instruction. God looks at that. So you will look at David and you will look at Saul. You say Saul did one sin. And David didn't kill. Slept with Bathsheba. 
killed her husband Uriah, counted the people. Come on now, walk that thing through. We can look at David and start racking up stuff like, hold up, God. But God says, I look at the heart. Because when, they, when, when the prophet came to David and said, you are the man, David said, you're right, I am the man. When the prophet came to Saul and said, Saul, you didn't kill the sheep and you didn't kill the king of the Amalekite. God, Paul says, yes, I did. I did what God said. It's the heart posture. It's your response when there's a window of repentance. You better take it. When God asks you a question, Adam, where art thou? Don't you blame Eve. You say, here I am. I messed up. I missed it. I, oh, God, I dropped the ball. He's asking. That's the window for you to repent. That's the window for you to get it right. That's the window of mercy. He already know what you did. He already know you missed it. But when he comes to you with a kingdom mindset, you perceive that thing and be like, hold up. God's giving me a time to get this thing right. All right? So watch now. Watch what he says. He says in verse, verse 20, he says, Lord, he already got 10. Why are we giving it to him? For I say unto you that everyone who has shall more be given. And he who has not, that which he has shall be taken. So you wonder why things keep depleting. Remember, the gifts, the talents, the dream, the call, they all have a kingdom purpose. And if you don't have the mindset of the kingdom, then God has to remove those things from you because they're not being used for his purpose. This is rough for some people because we think God loves it. Yeah, he loves everybody. But he blesses according to those who line up and obey him, Deuteronomy 28. When you obey the Lord, these things now begin to pop off and happen for you. Yeah, the favor of the Lord is working, but he's supposed to see, watch, obedience in the earth. He's supposed to be an obedient ear. You're moving like he said, move. Not you going, well, God, you know this, and God, you know my story, and God, you know where I grew up, and God, you know how hard I have it, and God, you know what they did to me. Those are excuses. They do not produce kingdom results. Are you with me? So now we have to abandon now the ways of the world, the kingdoms of men, the kingdom of religion. We have to now denounce them. If you don't denounce them, they're going to show up, and you're going to start seeing things be diminished. Don't ignore that. No, I just, no, no. Pay attention to things keep leaving you. Pay attention to things keep breaking. Ignore it if you want to. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's look over at Luke chapter 4. I want to land this thing today, okay? Luke chapter 4. I just wanted to expound that we as Zacchaeus are supposed to become what? Ambassadors here in the earth realm, okay? So now when we have an encounter with Jesus, we're not supposed to be deployed to do his will, and we're supposed to stand up and change our ways. Zacchaeus changed his ways. Zacchaeus changed who he was and how he did it. When are you going to change? No, for real, for real. Like, no, when you know, you can, I got met the Lord. I got saved. I've been working with God for you. ain't changed, though. You're still afraid. You're still sitting on what God gave you, talking about God gave it to you, like God going to work it. God's not going to work it. Your faith is going to work it. Your faith is going to move. Hallelujah. Okay, Luke 4, start at verse 1. We'll probably read to about 13 or 14. It says, And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being 40 days tempted of the devil. And in those days he did not what he did eat nothing. And when they were ended, he afterward hungered. Say he hungered. And the devil said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, command that this stone is be made to bread. And Jesus answered him, saying, it is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Now, notice, hold on, the enemy here now, this is the kingdom of Satan, the kingdom of Satan. Satan comes himself. He's tempting Jesus. He will tempt you if he tempts Jesus. But what did he tempt him with? He tempted him with his current situation. He tempted him with his need. He tempted him with what? His physical state. He tempted him in his flesh. Jesus is off of a fast. Come on, you know how you, when you come off a fast, man, you'll eat anything. Smell something, you almost pass out. Satan came and said, use your power to turn these stones into bread. What did Jesus say? 
You shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Hey, I'm going somewhere with this. I want to keep you today from clashing with other kingdoms. I want to keep you today, not that you won't clash because they conflict with you, but I want to keep you from vacillating, from having mixture in your life, because what's happening is we're not seeing the fruit of the kingdom because we keep tiptoeing into other kingdoms. We keep toe dancing into other kingdoms, and then we get mixture, and now our mindset is operating in more than one kingdom, and now they become conflicting. So we don't get all of the world has to offer, and we don't get all the kingdom has to offer because we toe dancing. And I, and, I, and I brought those to your light so you, won't, so you know how they operate, so you won't be tempted to go into them. But I need you now to refrain because the kingdom of God is going to work for me. Most of your faith in this hour is going to be done by refraining. I know we got the faith to go do some stuff. Uh, 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 hear me. Hear the word of the Lord. Your faith is going to be expressed in this hour by you refraining, by you not talking, by you not going to the invitation. By you coming off the group call, the group meeting, the group text. Ah, I don't want to hear you. You're going to have to pull back. Why? Because the, the enemy is going to be pushing you to do stuff. Turn, aren't you afraid? I thought you were a Christian. I thought you said by now you have this. I thought you'd be married by now. I thought you had a house by now. And he's trying to provoke you. <sighs> okay. He, this is so good. Okay, okay. So what Jesus is saying here to him when he said it is written, he's really saying in the beginning. Well, this is important now because he's what? Alpha and Omega. He's the author and finisher of our faith according to Hebrews 12, right? So, so in John 1, it says what? In the beginning was the word. The word was God. The word was with God, right? That goes back to Genesis 1. It says in the beginning God created. So he's telling Satan, you know how the beginning started. You as believers are going to have to know that our world starts with what God said. Your world, oh, no, no. the worlds were framed by the word of God, but it's your world framed by the word of God. Okay. The wor we understand by faith that the worlds were framed by the word of God, but it's your world framed by the word of God. Does your house run by the word of God? Does your money run by what God said? Do you parent your children by it is written? I'm talking about kingdom right now. Do you default to what God said over what the world is saying? Do you default over what God said or what they're pushing on you? This is important because this is how Jesus responded to the temptation of Satan. All right, watch this. I'm going somewhere. Verse 5 says, and the devil takes him up into a high mountain. And showed him all the kingdoms of this world in a moment of time. And the devil said, all this power I will give unto thee and the glory of them. And it is delivered unto me and to whomsoever I will give it. If thou therefore will worship me, all shall be thine. And Jesus answered and said unto him, get thee behind me, Satan. For it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only shall thou serve. Different temptation. Watch. He just left from tempting him in with his needs and with his wants and with his flesh and with his desire. Now he's tempting him with fame and vanity, and popularity, and likes, and follows. Hey, do you want a podcast? I got a podcast for you right here. You can jump that thing off. You've been hidden for too long, girl. Don't you know? The world needs to see you. The world needs to know about your ministry. The world, the world. The world is waiting on you. See, the temptation here is to get out of order. Help me, Holy Ghost. This is why I need the saints to settle in because we don't talk about this as much. See, the kingdom of God operates in principle, in protocol. It operates in uh, uh, timing. It operates in precepts. And it, so when God gives you something, if we stay within the, the confounds of protocol and not get tempted to come out, it will keep us in order. When somebody's requesting that you get out of order or do something out of order or start something out of order or get out of line where God has you out of timing because it is a true desire or a true want or it is something that God has prophesied to you or promised you, you got to be careful of that because you will make it God. And I'm telling you, when you get out of order, see, see, the favor of God doesn't work with you getting out of order. The favor of God works where God takes it out of time and brings it to your now. The favor of God is not you getting out of line, go and get it. That's what the world tell you. Um, 
So you got to settle in if you're single. I'm giving you kingdom now. I'm going to deal with the married folk in a minute. Y'all don't, don't sit, sit straight. <laughs> you got to settle in if you're single. Because the enemy want to bring you a situation to steal more of your time. Because if you get in a one-year relationship right now that's bad, it's going to cost you five to ten. And now what you should have been doing in your 30s, you won't be able to do till you're 35 or 40. Okay, okay. You, you, you're in your 50s now, and if you give somebody one year, it's really 10. Because of the stage you're in. Oh, I can't get no help in here today. So that's why you can't get out of order. You see running your race. Remember uh, Carol Burnett? What's his name, Mr. What? Tim Conway? The high, you stay in your race. It don't look, uh, don't look cute. But if it's your race, uh, somebody going past you, but God ain't called them what he called you to. And you got to see them going past you. Uh, you got to see them moving past you. Ooh. <laughs> hey, all right, I'll see you. I got you. Oh, hey, praise the Lord. Uh, and don't you get out of order because the devil's going to tempt you with timing. He wants you to worship him because once you get in the deal, it's hard to get out of. Prayer ain't going to get you out of some stuff because then you got to undo some stuff. That's my point. He wants you to get in covenant with him because then when you get wound up with him, it's hard for some of those things to get on. Oh, my Lord. What what they do at the, at the wedding? They do the uh, the unity saying. <laughs> now next wedding you go to, I want them to try to pour the sand back out of the one into the individual's thing. The point is so hard. It's so hard to get back what you had. It's so hard uh, when you get engaged. When you get engaged, it's so hard to get back to where you were and to get back to whole. My point is you don't have time to be tempted with getting out of time and God's timing. Stay in order. I said stay in order. I said refrain, refrain, refrain. There's some people who don't need to start business right now. You good on the job you want. Hey, that job is keeping you. That job is keeping you steady. You're too undisciplined to, to start a business right now. It ain't timing. Even though it's in your heart. That's why we got to stay in God's today. Oh, they've been waiting on you, child. You've been waiting. Your sister got a business. Your, your auntie got a degree. You're the only one in it. And don't you just go to school to be going to school. That's a trap. You better have a destination with that degree. Don't you know they will give you a $50,000 school loan but when I give you a $10,000 business loan? They will give you money to go to school. The government will give you money. No credit. Give you money right now to go to school. Some of you just look straight. I know you got student loan debt. I ain't preaching on that right now. Pray, praise the Lord. Come on. We pray the Lord to get us out of that, right? We pray for wisdom. And Lord, help me. Help me. Help me. Help me. We were living off grants and riding out and bought. No, 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 no. The bill comes due. The bill, the bill comes due. Talking about wisdom now. They'll give you 50K to go to school for something you don't even know nothing about. But won't give you 10K to help start a business or something that you know about. And a dummy. In a lot of cases, we prove the opposite. Here's where I'm going. Stay in God's timing. Stay in God's order. Don't be moved by what's popular. Don't you want the world? Don't you want your name and lights? Don't you want to be a star? Don't fall for that. Don't fall for that. Because the people who God wants to know you will know you. The people who he wants to promote you will find you. He will put your name in their mouth when they're asleep. They will wake up with a picture of you and don't even know who you are. David did not, oh my goodness, David did not audition to go to the, he didn't audition. He was, he was hid at his daddy's house. When the prophet was looking for him, he couldn't even find him. But somehow his name made it to the palace. The man said, I know a man that can play. How did that happen? 
heaven. You want heaven to promote you. You want heaven to promote your business. You want heaven to send you clients. We want heaven to send us members. See, pastoring is with permission. That's why we ain't trying to pull nothing, catch nothing, drag nothing. There's some friends you have that can't come to this church, not because we won't welcome them here, because their heart is not fixed to serve the Lord. Their heart is not fixed to be still under this teaching. Ah, they've been conditioned another way. So you can stop taking them bones, not going to eat it. You want them to get it, you're like, oh, taste this. Oh, God, they, mm, ah, mm. I know what I'm talking about. What verse am I at? Don't nobody know. Verse 9, give me this so we can land, all right? It says, and he brought, watch this, and he brought him to Jerusalem and sat him on the pinnacle. I'm going somewhere now. On the pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, if thou be the son of God, cast down thyself from hence. For it is written, he shall give his angels charge over thee. Here we go. To keep thee. And in their hands they shall bear thee up at the last time thou shalt dash against thy foot, foot against a stone. And Jesus answered and said unto him, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. Watch. Watch this. Watch this. So he, here's the, he, he tempted him first with what? With flesh, with need, with desire, with his hunger, with his condition, with his situation. He then took him up. He promised him glory. He promised him fame. If you will worship me, I will give you these things. I will make you bigger than what you are right now. I will get you out of timing. In this, now the enemy now, because he gave him the word. He said, man, shall not live by bread alone. And he gave the Satan the word, and the Satan gave him the word back. This is where you got to be. Satan now took the word, twisted the word out of his intent, and gave it back to Jesus, who was the word, by the way. So I don't know how you give the word to the word. Watch, watch what he said. He said, he quoted scripture. That was scripture. Satan was a cherub. He was an angel. He knew the word. There are demons who know the word. He said, oh, uh, do, here's what you do. He should give his angels charge over thee, so jump. He said, don't tempt the Lord that God. Now, here's, here's where I want to go. So the world right now is doing, a, doing word games. What I mean by that? They're taking words that have one meaning and giving them another meaning to deceive you. And we can't play the word games. Okay, it's something as simple as, you, I got you right here. You want traditional or boneless wings? Now, what wing you know that don't have a bone? I wait. What chicken wing you know? You mean to tell me you're going to take the time to take the bone out of this? What are they doing? They're giving you chicken tenders in some cases. It's a breast or a thigh that they've made bite size and breaded it and coated it. And rather than treat you like a child and call you giving you chicken nuggets <laughs> or chicken strips or chicken tenders, they say, do you want a boneless wing? Deception, De devil, liar. Next time they ask you that, ask them which wing you know don't have a bone. I said wings. I don't care what you call it. This is, this is my idea. This is my idea, one of mine. I believe they're setting you up for this meat that they're making in these vats. This meat, because the FDA has approved now that they get all oh my love. They're taking sales and making meat that don't come from chickens. So they're making it in clumps. If you look at it and you see it, go look it up. Go study. Go search it. Go search what I'm saying. They're making meat in vats that the FDA has already approved two companies. One of the richest people in the world owns one, one if not both of the companies. And they're making meat. So your tenders, oh, I'm sorry, your boneless wings, your chicken sandwiches, you're going to have to start watching what you eat. I know where I'm going right now. They're playing word games. Why, 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 why? Why are they doing this? See, there is no fight against cancer. I'm, I'm kingdom now. I'm bringing you kingdom. What? Cancer bringing in too much money. 
treatment. You think, uh, look at all the facilities now that were not 25 years ago, 40 years ago. I'm not saying the thing isn't there, but we went from, we went from cigarettes to vape. The vape was the excuse to get off the cigarettes. Now the nicotine in the vape. Next cycle. See, what the world does, the world goes to a problem and wraps a system around a symptom. They find a problem and they wrap a system around a symptom. The kingdom goes to the beginning. So we're trying to solve juvenile delinquency, whatever you want to call it. Okay, so juvenile delinquency, let's track it, look at the family. Okay, Are both parents in the house. Well, maybe, maybe not. Well, he had a rough neighborhood. Well, okay, well, then we got to go back a step from that. We can't just go to the problem. We got to go. So maybe these two shouldn't have been parents. Maybe we should go back to the beginning and say we're going to wait till we get married to have sex. Because you've already proven commitment. So likelihood of you staying together because you've already vetted each other in some type of commitment versus just having a feeling in a moment and a night. Now I'm committed in a family. The likelihood of that child growing up and being in, a, in the right family and not becoming a delinquent. Now again, everybody has free will. I know some people did it the right way and the other party said I don't no more. Because that is possible. So I'm not bashing you if you had a divorce or you went through one. But, but in some cases, we know we, our pickers are broken. We talk about that all the time. Our pickers are broken. Come on, whoever had a broken picker? Picker was good and twisted and morphed. And <laughs> what am I saying? So, 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 so we're having a conversation about abortion. That's where, well, it's, it's right to the parent or the woman. Woman's rights. That's you. That sound good. Women's rights sound good. But we're not talking about we're killing the baby at the end. But if we go back to the commandments, oh, we don't like the commandments because we think that's the law of Moses. No, the commandments are to honor God and to honor people. And if you stick to the command, Jesus said, I did not come to do away with these things. I came to fulfill these things. So we would honor life. I'm trying to. I'm trying to. Um, so, 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 so. So, traditional marriage or modern marriage. And it, it, I don't know, no wing that don't have a bone in it. Marriage has already been defined by God. But the world is playing word games to now introduce, you pay attention to the shows they continually show you. You pay attention to all the companies now who got some dude and some dude and some woman and some woman trying to sell a brand, trying to put some. The devil is a liar. We stand on the kingdom of God. And now here's what you got to do. You got to stop co-signing some of that stuff. Don't bring me that. That ain't a couple. That ain't a family. Why am I saying? Because we got to get grounded in the kingdom now, and we got to resist and refrain from If we stop listening, they are the minority. The kingdom is the majority. I said the kingdom is the majority, but they're presenting it like they're the majority. The devil is a liar. If we stood up and said, no, I'm not spending my money over there. Oh, I'm out here now. Hey, I feel it. We're going to land it right now, and I don't even do Bud Light no more. Don't miss it. They spank Bud like hand. They spank target hand. When somebody try to push an agenda and things on you, you get to say no. But the problem is you have loved ones who are participating in these things, and you haven't learned how to tell loved ones no. So you bring it on in, and you're going to have, have them over to Thanksgiving? No. You and your partner can't come to Thanksgiving. You are welcome to come. I am not co-signing your system. I go back to the beginning, and there's some things that I refer to. So when you look at Leviticus, when you look at our laws, our things were set up. They were set up in a way to honor God. They were set up in a way to honor God. We got to get back to that. We got to teach our next generation how to do it the right way. And guess what? It's going to come with some persecution. Somebody's not going to like it. 
but we're not going to play the word games. A man is a man. A woman is a woman. The church is the church. Pastor is about authority is authority. No is no. We got to get back to doing it the king's way. Well, you know, I think, I feel, what, well, well, well. No, what did God say? In the beginning, what's the word? In the beginning is what the king said. I have the king's perspective about everything I do, about everywhere I go. And now I'm an ambassador. I'm a representative that I stand flat-footed and I say what he told me to say to who he said to say it to, how he said to say it. And I don't back down and I don't bow because I know God got me because he endorsed it and he enforced it and he empowered me with it and he told me to say it. And could it be, I'm not setting everybody in the room free, but could it be two or three that are watching me and waiting on me to stand that God wants to get delivered and set free because because I don't believe in the separation of church and state. That's a worldview. Hey, the Bible, the, the very thing came up, me, so the state don't get involved with the church. Not so that the church would not be involved with the state. You are the church. You can't even vote without kingdom. That's why we have to pull down these strongholds. That's why we have to pull down these things that are trying to idolize and go up. That's why you got to pull down your skin color. I don't have time to go there. You just got to pull it down. Just trust me right now. You got to pull it down. Why? Because it's going to be a distraction. It's going to be a deception. Do you hear what I'm saying? Are you hearing me? You can't get up into the, you can't hate police. Police is authority. I'm not saying they don't need to be governed. I'm not saying some things don't need to be changed, but you can't hate police. You can't teach your children to hate police. You're setting them up for failure. You're setting them up. You ain't guaranteed no lawsuit if something happened on that traffic stop. You ain't guaranteed no payout. And we got them bucking now. They bucking at the st traffic stop like they stopped the police. Uh-uh, that's not where you handle that. Oh, in the street was, you don't buck the jack. You know what I'm talking about when I say don't buck the jack? Lord, you know what I'm talking about, right? Okay, don't buck the jack. I mean, if somebody robbing you and they got the gun pointed on you, don't buck. Don't, don't give them resistance. Give them whatever they want. So we don't do that in the world, but we do that with the cops. No. Handle it a different way. Handle it a different way. We got to not go in the helicopter and have a kingdom mindset concerning everything. T -t come on, let's teach, our, let's teach our children a different way of doing things that we honor authority. Come on, I used to want to be a cop. As a kid. Or a robber or an Indian or something I wanted to be. I wanted to be something. Home Ranger, something I want to be something. So we got to be mindful of the images we put before our children. Watch this, and before each other. You're going to have to guard who you follow on social media. Some people are set up as plants of the enemy. You're going to have to guard, oh my goodness, you're going to have to guard what preachers you listen to. I'm telling you, there's a slew of preachers that have gone left, that have swerved big time. Hey, there's some worship leaders who are no longer worshiping. Let me help you. There's some praise leaders who ain't leading praise no more. Not until the Lord Christ. Come on, stand to your feet. We're going to have to now embrace the clash that because I'm a kingdom citizen and I'm an ambassador, just as Zacchaeus stood and declared, I'm changed today. I'm going to do things different today. Persecution come what may, I'm going to be different because I encountered Christ. This is the hour and the place and the time that we're going to have to embrace the clash. The grace of God that is on your life is more than enough. Come on, you are empowered to do what God has called you to do. You do not have to be afraid. Could it be you that God wants to use like Esther to set a whole people free? Could it be you like Esther who God wants to use but you won't speak up? But you think you're there for another reason. You think you're at the job to fit in and God didn't send you there to fit in. It was dark before you got there. Why would he send you, agent of light, child of light? Candle. Why would he send you to that place and now it's still dark because you won't light up and you won't speak up and you won't discern and you go along because you don't want to be persecuted and you have not gotten over rejection and you have not gotten over fear. I sent you there. I gave you the favor. You didn't even qualify for the job. That should tell you that God sent you there to be on assignment to light the place up and tell the people truth and to stand on conviction and say, no, I hear what you're saying. I don't do it that way. Why? Because I serve a God who is king, who 
changed my life that I don't function like that no more. Yeah, I'll go with y'all to happy hour and I'll eat the wings that have bone in them, but I am not drinking. Hey, I'm not drinking. Why? Because the God that I serve has delivered me from being under divine and delivered me from, hey, all things are, are, are lawful for me, but everything's not expedient. Why? I'm going to witness by refraining. And I can go and be just the happiest person and laugh at the jokes, the clean ones. You got to be the light. And the saints just want to hang around saints. That's light on light. I'm sending you out as lights in darkness. And that's why you got to witness. That's why you got to witness to who come and sit in your chair. That's why you got to witness who come to your shop. You got an open doorway for the kingdom. Every person on that phone, even when they're cussing you out, greater is he that is in you. Hey, you know QC gonna look at that call, they gonna watch it. Could you be witnessing to quality control by not cussing them back? Could you be witnessing now that they see how you handle that? Remember Hermes, Pastor Rachel? We went to a homeowners associate meeting and they was giving him the business. I said, that brother got to be saved. He got to be saved because I don't think I could have took him. I would have been flipped that table or something. Something would have happened. And he just sat there and smiled and nodded and thank you for your question. And went on to the next one and went on to the next one. And they had to be the Holy Ghost on the inside of him to refrain from going to a place. And he became the light in the midst of wolves, in the midst of darkness. He became light. He witnessed to me. If he witnessed to nobody else, he witnessed to my wife and I because we saw the light shining through him as they were attacking him, as they attacked Stephen, as they were coming against the kingdom. You got to be willing to stand and say what God tell you to say and do what God tell you to do, even if it's be quiet. Because we don't like to be quiet. We like to be heard. We like to give them a piece of our mind and give them some snapback and get them straight. No, the Holy Ghost will tell you to be quiet sometime too. He'll tell you to be still sometime too. We stand in what God wants us to stand in. We are agents of the kingdom of God. And we embrace all conflict. Come on. All contrariness that comes with our stand, with our place in God. We will not be moved. We will not be violated. We will not be uprooted. We have been given the permission and authority to be stewards of the kingdom. And God, show us what you've given us so we can steward it right. Show us the relationships you've given us so we can steward them right. Show us the gifts and talents and assignments and callings that you've given us so we can steward them right. So they're not taken from us. So we're not depleted. So we're not distracted. So we're not subtracted. So we don't have to go down. So we don't have to give up what you gave us. Lord, help us to steward the pounds and the talents and the calling and the pennies. Come on, that you have given unto us. Lord, every item, every talent, every dream, every assignment, Lord, bring it to our way. Holy Spirit, help us that we will not be distracted and become poor stewards. We thank you now for realigning and reassigning us in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, amen. Be encouraged today. Be encouraged today. You got something to say, dear? Come. Be encouraged today. As you go out, remember, it's open. It's okay for you to stand out. What do I mean by that? Somebody may hear that and immediately think it's about being out front. Sometimes the way you're going to stand out is in our refraining. Why you seem like there were things that were birthed in me that I did not discover. Let me help you. And I am not shy. He said that so loud. <laughs> but it's true. Greatness that I began to discover was when I was not even seen. Because as I'm hidden and as I am in a state of not being seen, it's when I begin to discover of the kingdom in me. My greatest times with the Lord were my refraining. Because you know who it dealt with? Me. <laughs> Nobody was around. You know, so and so and so. It's in the solaceness of being with the Lord. And from there is where the standout came. From there is when God will speak to you and deal with you solely about you. From there, He will deal with your fear. 
from rejection or thinking something's going to pass you by. Ooh, ooh, I need to say, no, you don't need to say nothing. Be quiet. Now let me train you. Let me speak to you. You want to stand out? Stand out. Someone needs to hear that. You trying to keep people from doing something? This don't have nothing to do with control. I'm telling you where you need to be birthed, where there needs to be things that are shaped in you. There are principles and different things. You're not going to do it. You're not going to really get it on the scene because there's a lot of noise. There's a lot of noise. And it will seem like things are passing you by. But what you come out with is a character that cannot be denied. There are some things that you cannot get always in the mix, always. No. Your personality flaws, your appetite, a lot of that is dealt with privately. What pulls you? There are things that used to pull me that I used to get, huh? But when I refrained, he started dealing with my appetite. Now let me show you what you're drawn to. Let me show you what gets your attention. I had to pull away. Let me show you what you, let me show you what you what you get pulled by. Let me show you what you get distracted by. Let me see. Let me show you you. And from there is when you can come out and be used because nothing can pull you. So what he needs you to be. And where he needs you to be used, you have to be in a place to where when God uses you in that, God is the influence. The situation and the people do not become your influence. And if you are struggling to say, I can't be, I can't be, I, no, I need to, I'm going to miss. I'm telling you, you will miss the majority of what God wants to do through you. It's a discipline. It's a making. It's not just about, hey, I'm going to, no. Lord, I'm going to be still and I'm going to allow you to make me. I'm going to allow myself to be taught. I'm going to allow myself to be rooted because you're going to need this. The moments that I spent, give me a minute, the moments that I spent alone is what prepared me to pastor. You know why? Because I had to be prepared to deal with multiple people. So he had to deal with my personality, my anxiousness, my need to want to respond. So now when things come, I don't have to respond so fast. Even when people are talking, that was made privately. That was done privately. That's what people can't see check with the Lord. Lord, what am I missing privately? So that I can be used properly the way that you want me to. You better get your private, your private lessons. I'm telling you. It seems like it's, you get missed. I'm telling you. The private lessons, that's what's going to keep you. the private times where it's just you and God and he's dealing with you he may send somebody to help and speak that no no that's you player just in case you start saying oh I don't know if that was the Lord no baby that's you but thank God for the private moments the private times of reproof the private times of correction the private times of, of showing me and teaching me so that you can be launched in whatever capacity that he wants to express the kingdom of God through you. It could be in his house. It could be in the workplace. It could be in government. It could be in different areas. It's, it's not just here. His kingdom wants to be established, brought down into all the earth. Not just the church house. But the only way that you're going to be able to do it and not be pulled whether you're in the church or not, you got to get that pri those private lessons. It is a must. I'm telling you, it is the best. It's some of the best gifts you will ever receive is when you're not seen. It's when you're not seen, when nobody's calling your name, when nobody's hanging out with you. I'm being worked on right now. 
embrace those moments. Amen. Somebody needs to hear that. You need some private work. You, you, you're too busy. You're too, ah, 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 ah. Sit down. Don't nobody tell, everybody here with the exception of a few, everybody in here grown. Sometimes that's what gets in the way of you reigning. You too grown. Let, can I share something with you before we go? Experience is not the best teacher. I just did a clash of the kingdom right there. I got the t-shirt. Experience is not the best teacher. You know what the best teacher is? An instruction. You just gotta go find out for yourself. The best teacher is an anointed instruction that will save you years. Think about it. How many instructions did you not obey that cost you? years months but you had to go find out so now you can tell how oh, i went through that you didn't have to go through it teach me i'll learn through your instruction that'll save me time you don't need the t-shirt stop wanting the t-shirt so you can show everybody that's the problem lord i want instruction i don't need the experience i want instruction so I won't waste time. I need the instruction. If, you, if that's your posture, you won't be so offended when you hear instruction. You won't have to, well, I'm going to go see what it is. No, 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 no. I'm telling you, there's protection in instruction. There are some things that you don't need to go and find out. There are some things of some, ah, I don't care who's coming back telling you it was all of that. No, 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 no. God is protecting you. I don't want to have to learn not like that could it just be he just wants you to get what you, the knowledge and the wisdom you need through an instruction so father in the name of Jesus <laughs> I want your instruction by way of the Holy Spirit we want the instruction by way of the Holy Spirit so we are not wasting time so that kingdom come and your will can be done here on earth we don't have another two years two months two weeks to waste on things that do that don't produce the righteousness of god lord i will hear your instruction i don't care who else has the experience of messing up failing lord i want your instruction so that i can have not just success i want good success not what everybody else has I want good success. I want to be able to do it another way. And the way is solely you. It doesn't matter how other people are doing it and say that this is the way you got to get it. No, that's not the way that I want it. I want it divinely from the spirit of the living God that will have it carved out for exactly what you want us to do. Send us your instruction. Send us your teachers. We want to be instructed by way of Holy Spirit. We are yielded and ready for your instruction and we will be a people of wisdom we will be a people of good character and when they see us they see our king when they see you I want them to see my king when they look at you when they see where you are when they watch what you say when they watch where you go do they see the king or do they see you? Lord, I want them to see you. I don't even want it to be a misconception that I serve you. <laughs> and you will send us in every area. We will have dominion in every area because we obey our King and we will not be afraid and we will have good success in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You don't have to be afraid. You don't have to be afraid. Give God praise. He's good. Go with God as he goes with you. Amen. Amen. That's it. Jesus, we all. Amen before you.